InfoSight has been one of the top ICT services and training provider companies in Malaysia. InfoSight office is located at Sertia Wak in Puchong. Our location is easily accessible and strategically located within a walking distance of LRT and bus stations. Our vision is to inspire excellence through our sworn commitment to quality innovation and efficiency. We ensure excellence and experience in our trainers to strive for our goal of providing only the highest quality of services to our students. provide a wide variety of training programs which include technical training and soft skills training both indoor and outdoor training. Our spacious, comfortable, and affordable training rooms are available for rental with high-speed internet. With our experiences in delivering ICT expertise to thousands of clients all over the world, InfoSight works with partners such as Huawei, Microsoft, Veeam, Linux Professional Institute, and CompTIA. We have many happy and satisfied customers and students all around the world, places like Canada, Poland, Australia, South Africa, Nigeria, Japan, Singapore, Norway, Hong Kong, Tunisia, Botswana, Kenya, Thailand, Indonesia, and many more. InfoSight, your trusted professional training experts. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, welcome everyone to the session. So Gabby is here and I will be the moderator of our session today at the Mystified Huawei Club. All right, so uh, in between our session today, uh, we are going to have two carpool activities here. And uh, there will be a total of uh, 60 ringgit Malaysia e-wallet voucher waiting for the winners. So uh, everyone are encouraged to join the Kahoot later. All right, so of course, uh, including our participants who are watching this live talk from the Facebook, you are encouraged to join our Zoom session using the link provided at the caption of this live stream post. All right, so only participants in the Zoom session are eligible to win the prize, yeah? All right, so don't wait, come and join us in the Zoom now, okay? All right, so that will be about the Kahoot session. And so uh, for now, before we jump into the topic of the day, uh, maybe let me introduce a little bit about our guest speaker, Mr. Pravin Nair. All right, so uh, Pravin is our InfoSight trainer who has over five years of experience teaching cloud and also the storage related topics. So uh, Pravin has taught students from uh, different parts of the world, including uh, Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, UAE, and many more. So among all of these countries, you know, uh, Pravin has gained the most popularity from South African students uh, because of his humor and funny character. So uh, Pravin was renowned as the king of South Africa in InfoSight too. All right. All right. So now I think without further ado, okay, let me pass the floor to our guest speaker, Pravin now. Okay. So Pravin, the time is yours. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Gabby. So uh, good morning, everyone. Good day. So my name is Pravin, of course. And yeah, of course, uh, they know me as the South Africa guy. Not the king, actually, but yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, we will be talking about Huawei Cloud in this sense. Uh, so, we'll go through some table of contents here. <clears throat> so, uh, what is the things we are talking about today? Generally, we're talking about what is Huawei Cloud in general. Uh, so, of course, we'll look at the intricacies of all the uh, all that stuff there. What are the core elements of Huawei Cloud? And then we'll look at a bit of compute services in Huawei Cloud, network services in Huawei Cloud then storage services at the end. And then we'll cut to a, maybe a break for a while, get you guys to do some Kahoot stuff. <laughs> and we'll look at how to build your own or your build your first server in Huawei itself. How easy it is actually, basically. And of course, I'll explain some attributes and stuff. And then maybe Gabe will have another Kahoot session for somebody to win some stuff. No issues there, right? 
<coughs> so cool stuff there. So we'll start off straight away with generally what is Huawei Cloud, right? So everybody has generally a general idea here and there what is Huawei Cloud, uh, what are the intricacies and all these things. <coughs> so what is Huawei Cloud? Huawei Cloud is basically a public cloud platform, right? Uh, the vendor is Huawei. So it's very similar to what you see in like AWS, uh, uh, Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure and all these things. <clears throat> How does this Huawei Cloud generally work? Uh, if you are familiar with cl cloud computing, Huawei Cloud is generally a huge virtualization environment. You have <clears throat> different forms of services there. So what are the forms? Generally you have network virtualization, storage virtualization, uh, compute virtualization. So you can build your environment on the cloud or in this sense, Huawei Cloud. So put it simply there, it's a huge virtualization engine, right? <clears throat> that's where you're gonna build your services. That's where you're gonna buy your services. You're gonna rent some service, depending. There are some physical services also available in Huawei Cloud, but uh, we won't go through that today. Uh, it's a bit more, let's say, intense stuff. Pricing wise, of course, it's a bit expensive in that sense. But of course, you can get affordable services for like virtualization services and stuff. <clears throat> so no worries. So that is basically what Huawei Cloud is, a huge virtualization engine. So what is the core elements of Huawei Cloud? Now this one is something, uh, is something that people have seen throughout, right? So you've probably heard these things before, IAS, PAS, SAS, all these kind of things. What do they really mean? IAS simply stands for Infrastructure as a Service, PAS, Platform as a Service, and SAS, Software as a Service. Infrastructure as a Service basically is providing you a virtual infrastructure to you build, or for you to build your services on. So you can go to like say vendors, like uh, in this case, Huawei, you can then procure your base infrastructure without needing to worry about the actual hardware. So you can build your servers, you can build your databases, you can build your applications, all in that environment. Infrastructure as a service is providing you the infrastructure. This is where mainly network engineers, uh, server administrators, storage administrators, these guys dwell in, right? So they're providing a base infrastructure. If you take it a bit uh, further, you have platform as a service. This is mainly where developers work, software developers, application developers, and all these things. Because most of the time, these software developers or these application developers, they don't want to uh, know about the intricacies of the, like say, uh, uh, network environment or how the server works or what kind of Windows version you have and all these things. They just want to know that, okay, do I have uh, efficient software installed to run uh, or build my application, right? So infrastructure as a service is providing you base infrastructure. Platform as a service is providing you a, a, a product which is already pre-built, right? <clears throat> so you just go and maybe optimize the product for your application environment, uh, build up your application and stuff. So this is where software engineers and of course developers and all these guys work it, right? And then you have software as a service. Software as a service is basically for those end users or let's say uh, customers. So they will come to the cloud, they'll like, look at the cloud and be like, oh, there's a lot of things here. Uh, but maybe there is something I want to use. And there's probably a software that's already built on the cloud that I want to use, right? So I'll just purchase the software, use it in my, in my environment connection and all these things. But I don't have to worry about building the software from ground up or even taking care of the network, anything in that regard. <clears throat> so, Infrastructure as a service is basically for your network guys, so, uh, storage guys, server guys, platform as a service for your application software developers, and software as a service is a pre-ready software that is for your end users or customers themselves to come and use. So these are the core elements of Jenny Huawei Cloud, or you can even say most clouds. <clears throat> Huawei is uh, one of the few cloud uh, providers that actually provides all three. There are other cloud providers like AWS and Microsoft Azure. You'll find some cloud providers only either provide infrastructure as a service or maybe platform as a service and software as a service. Not all three. 
it's a very intricate moment that way because it requires a lot of hardware, requires a lot of background and all these things, right? So that is generally the core of elements here. Cool stuff. So we'll move on to some services. So we'll look at compute services first. Now, what is compute services? <clears throat> generally, compute services is basically providing you CPU and memory in some sense, right? So the first service you'll see here in Huawei Cloud generally up here is Elastic Cloud Server, or generally the term used is ECS. Essentially, put it very simple, this is a virtual machine. It's a virtual machine on the cloud. So it has all the attributes of a physical server, but just virtualized instead of uh, uh, what CPU and memory, you have virtual CPU and memory <clears throat> instead of uh, network, uh, like say NIC cards and all these things, virtual NIC cards, that's basically it, right? <clears throat> the thing with ECS is there's a lot of different specifications you can use, which I'll show you later on, of course, but don't worry. So there's a different types of specifications for different types of situations. Now you will go to the cloud with a, a goal in mind. So you wanna either migrate your whole environment to the cloud or you wanna build up an application in the cloud. So there are different specifications of servers available to you for you to use. And that is Elastic Cloud Server in general. <laughs> then you have something called auto scaling or generally if you put it in a full term, automatic scaling. Now this takes uh, a step further. This takes the cloud a step further whereby it provides you a service that can automatically scale your resources depending on certain policies you configure. Now, do keep in mind, you have to configure the policies. Um, things can go weird here and there, but don't worry. <clears throat> There's a lot of fail-safe mechanisms and stuff. Auto-scaling is a, a service that scales either servers, so we call it instant scaling, or bandwidth scaling. Instant scaling scales servers. It doesn't scale the size of the server. It generally adds one server or removes the server, right? <clears throat> so let's say you have a one server running for some reason and you are running an e-commerce environment. <clears throat> you might have a sale happening maybe tomorrow. You know the sale is going to happen. So you can have auto scaling add a server uh, directly or you can have something called dynamic scaling or alarm-based scaling, whereby depending on certain CPU or memory uh, utilization levels, you can either add servers or remove servers, <clears throat> specifically the virtual machine instance themselves. Very good service to have if you're running uh, e-commerce specifically, right? <clears throat> Not only does it mean that you can only use it for e-commerce, but yeah, <clears throat> you can use it for a lot of slew of environments. But uh, the main thing behind a service like this is you need to run it on a stateless environment. If you have stateful servers, then you will see a lot of issues, man, believe me. But stateless environments, as long as your servers don't save uh, information on themselves, they're all right. So you have a backend database and all that stuff. So yeah, cool. The last one is called image management service. Of course, these are not the only compute services available in Huawei Cloud, but just the three uh, here, just to get used to it. Image management service is easily explained as templates. If you're familiar with virtual machine templates, VMware environments and stuff, the template service in Huawei Cloud is called IMS or Image Management Service. So it's not a service that's going to add some performance to your environment. It's not a service that's going to uh, suddenly boost the power of your environment. No. It's a quality of life service. And believe me, it's quality of life. It basically takes a template of your, uh, your running server. So you can use the template to deploy multiple servers. The servers will come uh, equipped with the same application that you have taken for the template. So maybe you have a server with Nginx installed, PHP and all this stuff. You take an image of that and you use that image to deploy a new server or a new ECS. That ECS will come with all the uh, basic uh, applications already pre-installed for you. So it's cutting down uh, your job time basically, right? So you can do other things. And that is image management service. <laughs> you can uh, have uh, images brought into Huawei Cloud. So you can have your own uh, uh, personal images like your on-site images, local images brought into Huawei Cloud. Again, of course, uh, export images out of Huawei Cloud also. You can export them in different file formats. You can go through the white papers for that. No worries, man. All good. So that's the compute services that we're generally talking about today. 
of course, there are a lot more. Don't worry, there are like bare metal servers and stuff. But no worries, we only have a few minutes here and there, no issues. So uh, then we'll go into network services. Now, network services, I would say a lot of people would maybe disagree with me, but I would say it's one of the core services. The core service is virtual private cloud. So very simple service. Uh, it is basically where you build your network. Right? You choose how much IP addresses you need, you build your subnets, uh, you assign uh, servers into the subnets with uh, either a manual IP address or DHCP and whatever. But I see a lot of people get this wrong. They go to the cloud and they just use the default VPC or default network. Now, network planning is very important, believe me. I've seen a lot of things go wrong. I've seen a lot of uh, things go right, but yeah. So virtual private cloud is basically an isolated network environment that you will use to build up your, you know, let's say your architecture in the cloud, right? That is basically it. simple service, nothing much to it, believe me. But planning, and of course, uh, all this is required. There's a lot of planning tools outside, so use them. Configuration-wise, virtual private cloud is pretty simple. If you're a network engineer coming into the cloud, you look at virtual private cloud, you might laugh, truthfully. Very simple. The next one you have is, of course, uh, NAT gateway. Now, these are all products that you probably know about. If you are familiar with network, <clears throat> NAT gateway or network address translation gateway basically in Huawei Cloud helps you do source or destination net. Source net allows your server in Huawei Cloud to go to the internet if you're using a, a public net gateway. And uh, destination net allows traffic from the internet to come to your servers inside Huawei Cloud. Now, the intricacies here is basically on the public IP addressing that you use, which we'll talk about later. Destination net, you can do two things. You can do one-to-one uh, -one IP addressing, or you can also do what they call port mapping. <laughs> Quite cool. We'll save your IP address, generally save your money also in Huawei Cloud itself. Hey, quite a cool concept here and there. The next one is uh, Elastic IP. Now, Elastic IP is, put it simply, public IP. That's it. If you want your services in Huawei Cloud to go to the internet, you will use Elastic IP. Uh, it will generally uh, allow you to obtain a public IP from Huawei. Uh, Huawei has a range of public IP addresses available for customers, of course. So you'll uh, either get a public IP depending on your region, and then you'll choose a bandwidth, right? So how much bandwidth you want. You can go up to, I think, uh, if you're doing build by bandwidth, you can go up to two gigabytes. <laughs> if you're doing build by traffic, I think it's about 300 megabytes. It's quite a lot of bandwidth. But do understand that all these services that you buy, you pay for, right? So if you want two gigabytes of bandwidth, sure, you pay for two gigabytes of bandwidth. Then. If you want one gigabyte, uh, one MB of bandwidth, sure, you can pay for one MB. <laughs> cool stuff. But Elastic IP, IP, public IP services. If you want your servers to go to the internet, get a public IP. If you want your load balancers to be uh, public, public IP, all these things. So it's a piggyback service, right? The next one uh, we'll look into uh, before we go to the Kahoot session and stuff is storage services, right? Uh, this is one of the main ones. You have three different storage services basically in the cloud. Any cloud environment, you'll generally have these three clouds, uh, these three storage services. In Huawei, we have Elastic Volume Service, Scalable File Service, and Object Storage Service. Elastic Volume Service is basically block storage. How it acts and behaves is like buying a hard disk. So locally, you will buy a hard disk, you'll attach it to a server. Once attached to a server, it still can't be used, right? So you still need to go inside the environment like a Windows environment. You need to still go into disk manager. You need to initialize the disk. You need to uh, format the disk if you want to put a drive letter, and then finally you will be able to use it. Same process here. You'll buy the disk or you'll buy an elastic volume service. You'll then attach it to an ECS. <clears throat> Once attached to an ECS, then the ECS will spin up. You go inside the ECS, you initialize the disk, you uh, put it with a file system, and then you give it a drive letter, then it can be used. So it's 
virtual hard disk. Exactly. That's, that's the best word to describe Elastic Volume Service. The other one is scalable file service. Now, scalable file service, files, uh, file storage, basically, if you're familiar with the term NAS or network attached storage, scalable file service is NAS in the cloud. This guy can't be used alone. Similar to Elastic Volume Service, if you buy them, you just keep them there, don't attach them to any server or stuff. You're going to pay for storage, but you're not going to use them. Scalable file service similar, it's a NAS box in the cloud. So you have to mount a server to the scalable file service for multiple file sharing. So you can have multiple cloud servers or ECSs connected to a single scalable file service for multiple different environments. So it's file share in a, a cloud level, let's say. There are two products inside a scalable file service. You have SFS and SFS Turbo. SFS allows, I think, about 10,000 connections. SFS Turbo 5,000 connections, but much more faster in performance, IOPS, and all these things. Scalable file service, NAS in the cloud, simple as that. No need to think further. Very easy service to use as long as you know how to mount a drive to your uh, mount a drive to a server. That's the service there. The last one will be object storage service. Now, object storage service is the guy that helps you build your Google Drive. Best example, easiest one to tell. So if you use Google Drive, you use OneDrive and all these things, object storage service is the guy that helps you build that, right? It's cloud storage. It's also the guy behind Netflix that saves all your videos, Disney Plus, whichever video on demand platform. That is the guy. In Huawei Cloud, we call it object storage service. You can go to Microsoft Azure, they call it blob service or blob storage. You go to AWS, you'll call it S3 or simple storage service, <laughs> right? RESTful APIs, HTTP level. You can access this uh, uh, storage without any servers. It's a standalone in some sense, but you can also add server environments. You can add uh, like backup data into object storage service and stuff. It has a lot of uses. The only problem with object storage service that people have is if you're using traditional applications, it doesn't really work well. It's more of new age applications, new storage service. It's cloud storage. It's the new kid in the block, let's say. Block storage, file, uh, file storage, these are old guys. They've been there for years, been there for decades, actually. So these guys, you generally got to know uh, how they work and stuff. Object storage service, very intricate, has a lot of different kinds of uh, features. Uh, so yeah, of course, I would say go inside any cloud environment and learn about them. But I would say now go inside Huawei Cloud, definitely. Go inside Huawei Cloud and learn about them. Very good storage services to have. Very good services to run around with. The storage, basically. Pricing-wise, the cheapest one will be object storage service. The most expensive one will be elastic volume service. Not that expensive, actually, if you talk about pricing. But yeah. So that is storage services or some of the storage services still have backup and all these things. So many things there, but I mean, maybe you can go more in depth later on, right? So we're inside Huawei cloud here. So I have already miraculously logged in for some reason. Don't worry. If you want to go and log into Huawei cloud, there'll actually be a register and login button at the side here. The register button will be bright red, and then there'll be a login button beside. So you register your account, you will need to, of course, uh, put in your credit card details and stuff, which, uh, yeah, of course, it's a cloud environment, right? You generally have to uh, set up a payment, uh, let's say, payment option. <clears throat> so the main thing about Huawei Cloud is, of course, there will be some free packages. If you register right now, you can try out some stuff. Uh, you can try out some free stuff in that sense. <clears throat> so you can go to the free packages, check this out. And all the things that we'll be doing is actually in the console environment. So we'll go into the console. This is where all the magic happens, right? Sometimes a bit laggy, but don't worry. So first thing you'll do is make sure that you are in the correct region. So if you want to deploy your services, you'll deploy your services are close to a region near you. So these are all the regions currently available in Huawei Cloud. So you have Hong Kong, you have Bangkok, you have Singapore, Johannesburg, Mexico. Of course, most of us uh, in Malaysia, or let's say in uh, Singapore, will choose Singapore. Uh, those closer to Hong Kong, those closer to Bangkok, will generally use those regions. I'm just going to leave it as Hong Kong. 
for some reason, I like Hong Kong, I don't know why. <coughs> but <coughs> this is the main thing you will choose. You want to deploy your services in a region closer to you. Okay. Then we'll talk about the services. So the services, you go to your left-hand corner, <coughs> you'll open up your service list. Now, this will be a bit intimidating in the beginning. These are all the services available in Huawei Cloud. So you have your compute services, your storage services, your network services, and so forth. Management, application, so forth, right? There's a lot of services, believe me. We only talked about a few, like we talked about Elastic Cloud Server and all this stuff. So there are a lot of other compute services, storage services, network services. This will be a bit more in depth. <coughs> But we will be mainly looking at creating your first server, right? So Elastic Cloud Server. This is the, uh, what do you call this? The, the, the clouds, I mean, the virtual machine in Huawei Cloud. So you can either choose it from here directly, or you can even search it from the search bar. You can type in the short form ECS. You can see Elastic Cloud Server there. You can use the abbreviated form, or you can type Elastic and all this stuff. Don't worry. Pretty simple. Cool stuff. And you'll also see there will be a bit of uh, like uh, a pin here, right? Now these pins are basically what they call favorites uh, options. So you can pin these guys into your favorites bar and you can move these services up and down your favorites bar. These favorites bar or this favorites bar will follow throughout. Let me just show you. All right, so I'll request to join once again. Hopefully you can give me control. <laughs> oh, technical difficulties as usual. You know, we do live in an environment where there's a lot of technical difficulties here and there. So I was talking about the favorite ease bar. So you can actually use the favorite ease bar in this way. Right. A bit slow. Let's let it load. It's a bit too slow. <laughs> right. So the favorite is bar will generally follow you throughout your Huawei Cloud experience, like I said, right? So you can put in stuff or you can pin stuff onto your favorite is bar, and then you can just move them around. And if you go to any services, so like say you go to virtual private cloud, for some reason today, Huawei is a bit slow. So I'll give it some time. So you'll see here, you are right now in the network console. However, my favorite is bar is still here. So even if I close this, if I open up my favorite is bar, it still follows me throughout my cloud experience. Now, this is a beautiful thing. It's uh, generally there for quality of life. It helps you out a lot. Definitely something to look at. If you're uh, frequently using the cloud, definitely get in what you would use most into your favorite is bar so you can move around faster. What we will be doing is creating our first cloud server. So we will be going to compute. So you'll have here the cloud server console. Now the cloud server console is basically a console where you have everything and anything required to build your server in Huawei Cloud. So you have your server, you'll have your disks, you'll have your image services, you will have your auto scaling services, uh, you'll have elastic IP load balancing, Anything to do with servers will be in one list. It makes it easier for you. We will be looking at Elastic Cloud Server. Now to buy a cloud server, generally just choose the uh, basically a service you want. And there will be always a big red button on your right hand corner. This is where you purchase services. So you click buy ECS. Now you are going into the uh, basically configuration environment. So your first thing you'll look at is the billing mode. Now billing mode, you generally have three. You have yearly, monthly, pay per use or spot price. Yearly monthly simply says, okay, one month prepaid. I will uh, don't care if I use the server or don't use the server. <laughs> it will cost me 53 USD for a certain type of server, of course. Pay per use is an hourly rate. So every hour you're gonna pay 0 0.101 USD to keep this server running. Now do understand if you shut down the server in pay-per-use, they will charge you less. They will still charge you for storage, 
but they will charge they, they won't charge you for CPU and memory. Then you have spot price. Now spot price is basically there for for me at least I would think it's for testing environments. It's cheaper than yearly, monthly, or pay per use. However, with spot price, you have a timer in some sense. Because you see the price here, 0 0.0308 USD per hour. This price can increase. So it's uh, depending on supply and demand. If there's too much supply, the price will decrease. If there's a lot of demand, the price will increase. <clears throat> and if there's not enough supply, of course, right? So when the price increases, Huawei can actually reclaim your resources and provide it to somebody who bought it for a higher price. Now, it's, you bought it at 0 0.308 USD and the price goes up to 0 0.309 USD. Somebody else bought the ECSs. Huawei can reclaim your ECS and provide it to somebody else. That means your server will stop working. So I generally use this for test environments. You also have something called spot block. Uh, this will be on a hourly base timer. So you can say, okay, I will run it for one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. If you want to do some testing, very good uh, service to have, right? Very cheap. Definitely use it if you want to test some things like uh, maybe you have an environment, you want to install a new patch uh, on the server, but you don't want to install it on a production server. You create a test environment, use a spot price ECS, see whether the patch works, everything is up and running. Then maybe you can deploy the patch onto your actual production environment and uh, uh, what do you call this? Shut down the spot price ECS. I will use pay per use. Then you have the region. So the region of Hong Kong. So that's where we're going to build our servers, no issues. And then you have something called AZ. Now AZ, you can think of it as data centers. I mean, it doesn't actually mean data centers, but you can think of it as different physical locations. So this is physical location one, physical location two, physical location three. Why do they have these options? This is how you build your reliability. Because at the end of the day, you are the architect of your own environment. You either want to build all your servers in a single AZ, so a single data center, but do understand if the data center goes down, all your servers are not available. Or you can have your servers in two different data centers. <clears throat> You'll have reliability. But if the servers need to talk to each other, might be a bit slower because this guy AZ1 and AZ2 might be 100 kilometers apart. So if server one in AZ1 wants to talk to server two in AZ2, it has to go through that 100 kilometers. Might be a bit of lag. So you choose whether you want performance or you want redundancy. It's an architecture de uh, design uh, question given to you. You decide what you want, right? So I'll just put it in AZ1. And then you have your CPU architecture. Now your CPU architecture is either the x86 base, which is your Intel based car chipsets or CPUs, or the Kunping base, which is the Huawei's proprietary uh, Kunping chipset or ARM based chipset. Generally, the Kunping variant will be cheaper, but if you want to run Windows applications and stuff, it doesn't work on ARM chipsets yet. In the future, maybe, but I know Windows is looking at it, but for now, yeah. So we'll use x86. The next thing you'll choose is your specifications. Now, this is very, very important. <clears throat> so specifications, uh, the easy way is just to look at the different types of specifications you have here. So you have like uh, general computing. So you can hover on top of the specifications and they will tell you what is the best practice, right? So this is ideal for like enterprise class applications. Then you have like memory optimized. This is uh, ideal for memory intensive applications. Then you have like large memory. They'll give you an example. Like, okay, this is the guy you use for your IMDB or your SAP HANA. High performance computing. Maybe you're doing some gene sequencing or something. This is the guy. Disk intensive, ultra high IO and so forth. <clears throat> now, choosing the specification initially might be daunting, right? After for a while, you'll get used to it. <clears throat> but do understand different AZs are different physical locations. So you'll see like AZ1 has a lot of specifications. AZ2 has less specifications. AZ3 has even less specifications, right? So if you want a specific server like high performance computing and stuff, you need to know if you want to do high reliability, what are the AZs uh, that have that product available? Sometimes you can see even the products are sold out. Generally, a lot of customers are using these guys and stuff, right? So keep in mind, because these are physical locations, they cannot have all the same servers, right? 
Eventually, Huawei will populate uh, these environment, environments uh, with all the correct servers, but for now, you know, that's how it works. So, <clears throat> cool stuff here. That's the specifications. The next thing you need to look at is your size, right? So what kind of servers you want? How big is your server? So let's, if you are more familiar, you'll just choose something like, okay, I want two virtual CPU, uh, four GB memory. And this will be all the different two virtual CPU, four GB memories. So this guy will be like for general computing. This guy will be like for general computing. Uh, this guy is general computing plus, general computing, uh, high performance computing and so forth, right? They have different CPUs. The thing to pay attention is the CPU and the assured bandwidth maximum bandwidth. <clears throat> now, at the end of the day, this is a cloud uh, environment developed by Huawei. So they have to uh, put some intricacies in there. The bigger, let's put it this way, the bigger the server you buy, the higher the bandwidth you get. Just to show you. So these are all the specifications. So you can see here two virtual CPU 4G memory. Uh, this guy, I get 1.2 gigabytes assured bandwidth. That means confirm I have 1.2 gigabytes and I can burst up to four gigabytes. And then you'll have about 400,000 packets per second. That means 400,000 uh, packets either coming in or going out together. So 200,000 coming in, 200,000 going out, 400,000. If you have 150,000 coming in, then you generally have 250,000 going out. That's the maximum amount. So you will choose your servers depending on the specification, specifically, right? Depending on your application environment, what kind of application you're running, how much bandwidth the application needs, or what kind of, how many packets come out from the application, go inside the application. These are all things you need to take into consideration. Or you can keep it simple, the bigger the server, the more you get, right? And of course, the bigger the server, the more the price will be, okay? So I'll just choose a small server here, just to give you a, uh, idea how it works. So where's my S3 large two? S3 large two. Uh, this will generally be the free uh, services, uh, the, the, the free package software that you can use. <clears throat> then you move down. After you've chosen your specification, you have what they call image. Now image, like I told you, it's template and all this stuff. You can think of it here as OS, right? So you have public, private, shared, and marketplace. Public, is basically images provided by Huawei. So these are all base images. Of course, I'll choose CentOS here. And then you can choose the version of CentOS you want. Cool. Private images are created by you. Currently, we have no private images. Shared images are shared from another account to you. So somebody or your friend or your vendor shared an image for you to use. Maybe he wants you to use that image to deploy a server. And the last one is marketplace image, whereby if you go to the marketplace, there will be vendors or there will be partners of Huawei that actually share images in the marketplace. Like if you want to go database and caching, you can get some like a MongoDB cache here, MongoDB database. Uh, maybe you want some big data environments like TensorFlow, Knowledge, some security services. Maybe you want to get some like Bastion host. It's all here, right? So you can check out the marketplace, see whether it's something that you want to use, that images will be there. I'll just say cancel. I will use a public image, so my send to us. And then you have something called host security service. This is basically a basic protection. So you have like account cracking, weak password detection, a bit of uh, malware detection, malicious program detection there. This is given to you for free. After that, you will need a disk. So if you want to install an OS, you need a disk. This is called a system disk. If you want to add more disks, these are called data disks. So you can think of this system disk or drive C, your Windows disk, and data disk, your drive D, E, F, and so forth, right? So that's that. Once all this is done, you will click next and you'll start configuring your network, okay? So network, you have your VPC. I have one here already pre-created. But if you are doing it in a proper environment, you will do your planning first. Now, this is not proper planning, like a 192.168.00 slash 16. It's a huge range. So you would do proper planning, right? So you choose your VPC. And then if you have multiple subnets, you'll choose your subnet. And maybe you want to assign your IP address manually. That's all done yet. It's very easy, right? 
believe me, when you go inside VPC and try to build one yourself, it's free, believe me. It's very easy. So you can go and create a VPC here. If you want multiple NIC cards on your servers, you can have up to 12 NIC cards on a virtual server. So a single ECS can have 12 NICs. So 12 inputs and outputs and all this stuff. But do understand, they still follow the same bandwidth. They still follow the same packet per second that you have earlier. If you have 11 NIC cards, they still go up to 400 packets, uh, 400,000 packets per second and stuff, right? Then you have security group. You can think of security group as your Windows firewall. What traffic is allowed to come inside your server, right? So here I permitted a, a bunch of traffic. This is a default group. So here they permit uh, port numbers 111 uh, on TCP, port 22, 3389 for like a SSH and a RDP. <coughs> so that's that, right? So you choose what traffic comes inside. Very Be very careful with this. If you allow all the traffic, then I can't do anything, man. But be very careful, right? So specifically allow the traffic that you need only. Don't allow anything else, right? Same for inbound and outbound. Incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, you will choose that, okay? Then you have EIP. Simply, do you want a public IP or you don't you want a public IP? You say not required, no public IP, no access to the internet. You say required, you have access to the internet. Then you have EIP type. Now there is a new one called premium BGP, which is a bit more higher in price. If you want a cheaper version, uh, let's say still reliable, I won't say not reliable, but yeah, <clears throat> you have dynamic BGP for that. So I'll choose dynamic BGP. And then you have build by bandwidth, traffic or shared bandwidth. Build by bandwidth is basically telling you, okay, for one uh, MB, how much it's gonna cost? For two MB, you can see the price going up. 5 MB, 10 MB, and this guy can go up all the way. Uh, currently now, I think oh, they've re reduced it to 500 MB. It used to be 2,000, uh, let's see. Oh, no, 500 MB now. <laughs> so maybe nobody was using two, uh, two gigabytes, but yeah. <laughs> then you have build by traffic. Now build by traffic different from build by bandwidth. Basically build by traffic simply means amount of traffic coming in, I'll build it. For every gigabyte of traffic, I will build you a certain amount, okay? So that's that. So I'll just use build by traffic, go next. And you have your advanced settings, which is not really uh, that advanced. It's just your name, the login mode, key pair, you wanna use public key, private key. Uh, you wanna use password. So I'll just put in a password here. And then do you want to have backup and recovery and something called anti-affinity. Anti-affinity simply means every time you deploy a server, it can be a chance where two servers are deployed in the same physical server. So if you choose anti-affinity, it'll make sure that every server deployed in this group, let's say, whichever group that you create, will be deployed on different physical servers. So if you have a, uh, the same application uh, environment running and you have like 10 servers, if you don't have NTFT, maybe five servers might be for some reason deployed in the same physical server. And if that physical server goes down, your services will still be recovered, but it will take some time. So your services, uh, five servers will not be available. So you put them in NTFT, they'll make sure that every server that you deploy are on different physical servers. And that's about it. After that, you have your advanced configuration, a tag and an agency. Agency is to allow managed services, allow somebody else to come inside to do something for you. Uh, so if you want to have a managed service environment, provide an agent, probably to your vendor or something like that, right? And then you click next. And then you double check, is this what you want in your servers? You say, okay, I agree to the service level agreement and the image disclaimer and you submit. And that's basically creating a server. So if you actually uh, know what you want, you can create a server in less than five minutes. Right, I'm just showing you because it maybe is the first time going through all the different attributes, but building a server is not hard. As long as you know what you need, what you want, you have your server up and running. You'll see it will get an IP address and then you'll get its public IP soon. And then it'll come, uh, uh, it'll generally start coming up. So public IP, and then you see a remote login feature here. Now, once this is blue, the server is basically up. 
you can remote log into a server. This is something that I find a bit different in uh, Huawei and also uh, AWS and all these guys. Huawei allows you to VNC right into the server. You can see the server starting up, everything is happening here, all good. And once it's up, you can go into the server. Sorry. And that's basically your first server in the Huawei cloud environment. So that's all I have to show you guys. Maybe next time we can go a bit more deeper into this. Of course, uh, we only have a certain amount of time today. So I'll give the screen back to Gabby. All right. Yeah. So just let me share back the screen. All right. So here it will be the one. Okay, so uh, so thank you everyone and thank you the, for the wonderful sharing and demo from pra Praveen. So the end of the lucky draw activity also marks the end of our session today. Yeah. Uh, so for uh, as uh, just a reminder for participants who has won the Kahoot session, uh, sorry, the, the the lucky draw session just now, uh, please uh, give us your information like your email and also your uh yeah your maybe your contact number to our chat uh to to the chat box so that we can send the prize to you after the session. Yeah. And so, of course, for everyone, if you want to know more in depth about the uh, cloud technologies, you're welcome to contact us as well, uh, as we do provide plenty of the cloud related certification training. All right, so for the upcoming months, August and also the September, we are giving out some special promotion on the cloud related certification training. So including uh, the Huawei Cloud uh, the Huawei Cloud certifications, uh, Comtia certification, and also the Microsoft Azure certification. So if you are interested, so here we have some promotion package for you. And so for all of this promotion uh, uh, package right here, they are all included: the ebook, elab, and also the exam voucher. And for every training here, it is HRDF claimable. Right, so please do uh, capture a screenshot here so that you can refer back uh, later. If you're interested to take any courses from our uh, from InfoSight, you can let us know and contact us at this number or at this email address. Right, sales at InfoSight.com or call us at this uh, at this number. Okay, so of course, you can also visit our InfoSight official website over here so that to check out what are the uh, what are the other available trainings uh, provide can be provided by uh, by InfoSight, and also uh, you can also uh, follow us on Facebook. So uh, of course, from time to time, we'll be uh, sharing some uh, some some useful informations from uh, in the Facebook, and also uh, we will be uh, posting our upcoming event in the Facebook post as well. Uh, so you can follow us in the Facebook, or you can also subscribe us. Uh, on the YouTube, right? So as what you can see from here, so we do upload some uh, video from time to time as well. For example, uh, if you want to learn Linux, okay, you can watch our video on our YouTube channel. Or if you want to know something related to the routing and switching, uh, backup, uh, you can also view some video from our YouTube channel. All right, so that will be about uh, the info set. And so, yeah, just a little bit sharing here before we end our session today, yeah? Here we have a small announcement about the topic of our live event next month. So we are going to talk about some advantages of uh, taking the CompTIA certification, especially for those who want to be excel in the IT industry. So uh, we will invite Mr. Hyrio, okay, who is a country manager at CompTIA, to have a sharing with us so that everyone can know better about what are the certification training can we participate uh, so that we can be equipped with the right skill to improve our career. All right, so that will be about the upcoming event. So of course, uh, we will share this, uh, the, the registration link in the chat so that everyone, if you are interested, you can register now using the link that we are going to post in the chat. Okay, and then, uh, of course, uh, in the chat later, we'll be also posting a survey form. So please do let us know about your feedback on this event. All right, so please do let us know. Or maybe you can also let us know about what are the type of topics that you wish to hear from us so that we can also arrange another event to talk about some topics that you might uh, you might be interested with. Okay, uh, so please uh, let us know in the survey form. 
Okay, so Sky, please have to uh, to paste the link in the chat so to let everyone know, yeah? All right, so that will be the end of our session today. So thank you again, everyone, for uh, spending spending your time here, okay, joining our event here. So I uh, wish to see you the next uh, the next time, okay, in our next live event. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, yeah, so uh, yeah, that will be the end of the event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you too, sir. Thank you. Services and training provider companies yeah, in just Malaysia. let me let me send you the send everyone the link here yeah, about the upcoming Chile. event and so on. Yeah, just one. Our location is easily accessible and strategically okay, so located guys, within a walking uh, distance of LRT and This bus is stations. the link for our upcoming event. Okay, our upcoming event, so you can register uh, through the upcoming, uh, you know, to our and upcoming event. And also, uh, the survey form. Yeah, just one moment. Let me share you the survey form. We link, ensure excellence so that you can let us know, yeah, what are the topics that you are interested in. Yeah, so the, the second link will be the survey form. Right? And also, the, the first thing will be the registrations. All right, so thank you to uh, Jack Husaini. Thank you to for for your participation. We okay, so we are see you next time. Yeah, thank you so much. Technical training and soft skills training, both indoor and outdoor training. Our spacious, comfortable, and affordable training rooms are available for rental with high-speed internet. With our experiences in delivering ICT expertise to thousands of clients all over the world. InfoSight works with partners such as Huawei, Microsoft, Veeam, Linux Professional Institute, and CompTIA. We have many happy and satisfied customers and students all around the world, places like Canada, Poland, Australia, South Africa, Nigeria, Japan, Singapore, Norway, Hong Kong, Tunisia, Botswana, Kenya, Thailand, Indonesia, and many more. InfoSight, your trusted professional training experts. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.